Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to build your own analytics dashboard similar to what is on screen right now. In this video I'll be working with React.js and Next.js and I'll be showing you how to implement analytics with a package called High Charts and also I'll be using a tool called Elasticsearch as well. Uh, you know, just thanks everyone for watching. I'm now at 383 subscribers which is great to see. And one of the comments in my previous video was uh, just a complaint around font sizes. Uh, so hopefully in today's video, this uh, font increase is a bit more clear in terms of you know what I'm actually looking at. And if you have any other feedback, you know feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, and I'll just uh, dive into this as well and show you how to build this dashboard out now. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how I keep my Postgres database in sync with my Elasticsearch database. So as many of you are probably already aware that um, a lot of people would use Postgres, for example, as their main database with uh, their Django project. And Elasticsearch is a database in itself, but Elasticsearch is a NoSQL database. So uh, the reason, part of the reason why Elasticsearch can search across, you know, huge data sets so fast is because, as part of the lookup process, it has, it isn't having to resolve any relations among documents because all the data has already been collected in the one place already. So there isn't any uh, foreign keys that might slow down that, um, uh, you know, analytics process generation essentially. So this flowchart on screen is the kind of steps that's happening in the back end. So the first step is to define an Elasticsearch index. So an Elasticsearch index is essentially a location where a bunch of documents are stored together and those documents adhere to a certain schema. So this is similar to a table in Postgres, for example, that many of you are probably already familiar with. So after you've defined your Elasticsearch index and what the documents of that index will look like, you will, you know, go ahead, edit your Django model. Say, for example, you want to create a, a new record in a table. After you've created that uh, Django model, you want to then update your Elasticsearch index immediately after so that your Postgres and Elasticsearch index are matching exactly. So the way that I achieve that is by following a thing called a repository pattern, which you can see inside uh, the, pr the project. So if I go to the appointment repository, um, that's the location of it there. You feel free to check the link out in the video description as well. But inside this repository, I have the methods create, update, and delete. So if I want to make any modifications to my Django model, it has to pass through this repository layer in order for it to happen. And by me doing this, it allows for the ability to simultaneously update my Postgres Django model and my Elasticsearch index at the same time. So here you can see I'm creating a, an appointment model record and at the bottom down here, I'm updating my Elasticsearch index right here. And this Elasticsearch index only updates whenever the Postgres database trans transaction has been committed. So if there's any problems in the process of committing the new record to the Postgres database, it won't update the Elasticsearch index, which is exactly what we want in this case. And the exact same logic applies for update and delete. So if I update my Django model, I also have to update the Elasticsearch index. And if I delete a Django model, I then have to delete the record from my Elasticsearch index as well. So probably the most tricky part is keeping the two in sync and in tandem with each other but once you get over that hurdle then you will have the ability to query the data very fast and instantaneously in real time and uh, I'll go on to actually showing you the querying part so once we have our Elasticsearch index populated and in sync with our Django database we'll then go on to this querying step and then we can actually display the results of the query 
inside our React web application. So an example of an Elasticsearch query in here would be uh, this one here, get appointment count. So get appointment count is this chart that we see on screen here. And we can see that it is a time series over the last 90 days that we can see the number of appointments booked. So on this day, there was 81 appointments booked. This day, there was one appointment booked. And this day, there was three appointments booked. So in Elasticsearch, this is what would be referred to as a date histogram. So uh, essentially what will happen is if there's any data missing for uh, for a specific date or within a specific date range, what you can ask Elasticsearch to do is to just set those values to zero. So you get a nice complete continuous time series, which can be um, desired and other circumstances, this might not be appropriate, but in this case, uh, we want that to actually happen. Um, here is how the Elasticsearch query actually looks like. So we have our Elastic Index called uh, the Appointment Index. We're searching across it where the conditions must match. What, what, and those conditions are that the created at date must fall within a certain date range specified by the front end of the web application and that the practice much, that must match a certain ID. So in this case, this is analytics around the general practice doctor surgery. Um, so this is where patients are requesting appointments essentially. And we're saying that the data, for the data to come back on the front end that must match this practice ID that belongs to that doctor surgery. And this is uh, what I was mentioning previously about the date histogram. So the data has to fall within a certain range and if there is missing values, they'll automatically get set to zero. And we're just performing a, an aggregation on the number of appointments booked essentially. And we're returning that to the front end of our web application. So this data set could have millions of records inside it and Elasticsearch would be able to quickly scan across it. And you can add even more complicated queries on top of that. So you could look for appointments booked by a specific patient, appointments um, dealt with by a specific doctor. You know, there's just an infinite amount of possibilities and Elasticsearch is very flexible in terms of what you can query. Um, so for this time series, it follows this schema, a date and a value. So if I go to the front end of my application, you can actually see the data coming in through here. So I have created a React hook and my React hook accepts a start date and an end date, which I've specified here. So the start date will be 90 days uh, previously from today and the end date will be today. And you have the ability on the front end to change these dates through a React component if you wish. And you can also specify an interval. So an interval is how you want the data grouped by. So it could be by the day, it could be by the month, or it could be by the year, even depending on the data set. So this React hook uh, provides an abstraction a bunch above all the a bunch of complicated stuff going on under the hood. Um, so essentially this hook it just makes a request to our Django REST API. So this is just the endpoint and it's passing in these parameters as part of the URL. Um, and our uh, Django REST endpoint is um, interacting with our Elasticsearch index. So once that endpoint comes back successfully, um, we then go on to display the data on the front end of our web application using high charts. So I'm using a thing called the open API schema. So I have my schemas on TypeScript automatically generated for me. And here is the overall count schema. So as I previously mentioned, there's a date and a value. And this is what my data set's gonna look like. And high charts um, can be, uh, it can require specific data format in order for the charts to actually display. So I'll show you that now. If I click into this component here where it's displayed inside appointment analytics. So here I'm defining the configuration for my chart and I'm saying here's the title, 
subtitle. Here's what the axis is and the type of chart. And here's where I'm actually defining this series. So uh, the series is appointments. It's a time series. Um, the X axis is date time as defined in here. And we're using a thing called Lodash. So Lodash is essentially just the JavaScript utility library for um, uh, basically you can use it for transforming uh, data sets quite nicely. It has a lot of functions already out of the box. Um, so I'm just using this to transform the data set into the format that high charts expects. So high charts wants an array of arrays. So this array represents a single point on the chart. So this single point here would be an array and it would contain an X and Y value. So this is my X value, which is the date, and the Y value is the number of appointments for that day. And that's just the kind of format uh, for the um, uh, for this kind of time series that High Charts wants the date in. So that's just a kind of quick overview of the High Charts format, and we've also got a pie chart configuration in here as well, and there's bar chart and a pie chart and a bar chart can require the data just in a slightly different um, format. So for the pie chart, it wants an array of dictionaries and one key being called name and the other called Y, but it's the same, you know, essentially the same logic as occurring with Lodash. You're performing just the map operation to get the data into that specific format. And then same again, we've got a bar chart in here and uh, you know there's transformation being applied again so you've got a name and you're specifying your y-axis volume so that's just a kind of quick overview around how i've built an analytics dashboard um, so in this case i've used high charts which you can check out here um, but there's plenty of other uh, chart plotting alternatives high charts you have to pay for it um, i like it personally um, even though it's you know we have to pay for it but there is plenty of other open source alternatives that are for free to use um, I'll include a link into the video description of a couple as well um, uh, some people would prefer the free open source ones which is fine a lot of them are you know great as well um, but just just the matter of personal preference really um, but that's it for me and thanks for watching and um, just make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the GitHub repository in the description and also um, don't forget to give that GitHub repository a star as well on GitHub. Thanks very much. Bye.